Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lewin Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Ben Stewart, who just um, finished up uh, Contentment from yes. Philippians, which was a nice follow-up from Anxiety. <laughs> yeah, Those right. fit together very yeah. well. And so when you think about um, contentment and Paul, you know, saying, talking about how in all our needs, mm -hmm. Christ has met him there. Um, you look at the world around and you see people who have these physical needs of food and basic health needs and starvation, people dying of starvation. And you look at them and you say, what do you say to that? How does this line up with this contentment that we find in these passages? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because you know, contentment doesn't mean resignation of eh, what will be, what will be like, it means I'm not, I'm not going to be inwardly tumultuous about a situation that even in the midst of really difficult external environments, I can be peaceful. And you see in the history of the Christian church, they could do that. You would see Christians face their death, their martyrdom and be peaceful people. That doesn't mean they wanted to die. That doesn't mean they thought death was great. They didn't, but they could be at peace because I trust a God who rules my life and my death and my life after my death. They had that peace. But, you know, for Jesus, when he talked about contentment, that contentment was the place from which you give. You know, that's what he talked about in Luke, where he's saying, you know, don't be anxious about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. Trust that your Father in heaven knows what you need. So seek his kingdom, sell your possessions and give to the poor. So that's what he's saying is the more content you are in your circumstances and trust that God's going to take care of you, the more liberated you are to look out for the needs of others. Mm -hmm. So a content Christian becomes a giving Christian, mm -hmm. you know, yep. and in your own needs, does contentment mean I don't seek answers? No, you know, like you can seek food, you know, but, but also that, that person who's hungry, can they trust God even in the midst of their hunger? Yes, we can trust him through the midst of incredible difficulty because he told us trouble's going to come, but I've overcome the world. I've got purposes beyond your present pain. Um, but for the Christian that's not in that condition, we should be racing towards that person to give relief. And that's what we do. Say, God's going to take care of me. He's going to make me an agent to care for you. And let's go. Awesome. And so I think about um, this idea of contentment versus like complacency. Mm -hmm. So I know my husband and I have this discussion a lot, just be happy with what we have and where we are. Yeah. Um, but balancing that with, should I just be happy in my job? Should I not work towards a promotion? Should I not be motivated or ambitious in my workplace because mm -hmm. I should just live in this place of contentment? Can you sort of speak to how that lines up with these verses? Yeah, totally. Well, and that's a, a really big worldview question of, you know, like um, motive matters to God, the why matters to people, you know? And so you can do the same act and do it from a really good motive or a really bad one. And so that's the question is like, why am I pursuing a particular thing? And you know, when God first created us, he made the world. Um, he told Adam to be industrious, you know, that God brought form so that the world could be filled with life. And he tells Adam, cultivate and keep the garden, protect it and cultivate it. Meaning it's going to be fruitful. Keep pressing to make conditions, Adam, where it'll be more fruitful. Mm -hmm. So God designs industry, mm -hmm. be the best at what you can do. Work hard as if working for the Lord and not for men. So there's a place for industry, but it's to glorify God for the good of humanity around me. And so that's why for me, it's like, I want to give the best sermon I can. Why? So I'll be a better speaker than oh, that's a terrible motive. So I can make more than, no, that's a horrible motive. So I can honor God with the beauty of a well-crafted sermon and so I can maybe help you. Mm -hmm. That's a good reason. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. But that can come from a content place, you know, yep. instead of an ang anxiety, I've got to reach this thing in order to feel good about myself. So that's where it takes some real deep introspection to go, what's my motive? Where's what's dri what's not, driving not the energy? Heart, yeah. Yeah. So there's a place for agency. And, and Paul was a very industrious person, but it came from a place of contentment. He was okay. So when he landed in prison, he wasn't like, I got to get out of here. I got to get to Macedonia. You're like, no, he's, he's like, okay, God, use me in prison. You know, there's a peaceful place. 
What a great word. And yeah. um, so that wraps up your time here at Faithbridge for the year. Yeah, and that's right. um, we certainly um, wish the Stewart family the best this holiday season. Oh, Hope thanks. you guys have a nice break and well, thank Merry you Christmas. Guys. Yeah, and we look forward you. to seeing you back next year. Yeah, sounds All good. right. And yeah. thank you for joining us here at Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.